So, well, my topic is uh, the cable analysis of superior colliculus neuron. And uh, I worked in uh, Mayor Jackson and Missile Basso's lab. And uh, Nima Gitani is part of the uh, neuroscience training program. He guided me throughout the work. So, I'll start with the introduction of the superior colliculus and then I'll uh, slowly move to the materials and method. So, superior colliculus forms two rows, rostral bumps. Uh, on the dorsal aspect of the left brain. And superior colliculus is described basically as a visual reflex center. And uh, one of the characteristic of the superior colliculus is that it is a very lamellar structure. That means we can uh, broadly uh, divide the superior colliculus into different layers, like superficial, intermediate, and deeper layers. And we are interested in SGS, which is a type of, uh, sorry, one of the superficial uh, layer. And in SGI, which is the intermediate layer. So most of the study involved, uh, they basically uh, wants to know uh, how the local circuits uh, between these layers uh, behaves and how the visual informations are processed in these layers. So we can see that uh, this is, uh, the, these are the two superior colliculus and then if you take the cardinal section, we can easily uh, figure out the different layers of uh, superficial uh, superior colliculus. So, what is this, stu this study about? This study basically uses uh, the patch clamp technique, which is a widely used technique to study a single cell uh, to record the electrical activity of a single neuron. So, we can see that this is a, a diagram which shows a cell, and this is a micro pipette, and uh, we use certain uh, amplifiers to amplify the signal. And this diagram shows uh, the connects. This is the time's objective image, and you can see that this might it is according to the uh, signal from the cable. So I have used here the cable analysis. So cable analysis is a physical, biophysical model to understand the electrical and geometrical property of the neuron. So what was the objective of the study? Why we are interested in this study? So previous study from our labs shows that uh, the superficial layer that is SGS and intermediate layer that is SGI doesn't behave equally when we stimulate them. So voltage imaging study says that the superficial layer and superficial layer, the response, the spread of the response is a bit more as compared to the intermediate layer. So I wanted to investigate whether the, the neurons of these two layers are actually different in terms of uh, electrical and property, or uh, how is the morphology? So, I'll first talk about the, what the raw motor neuron is and uh, what is the cable theory before going into the material method. So, Raal proposed that any neuron can be uh, can be uh, expressed as a combination of resistance and capacitance in parallel and the processes of the neuron that is dendrite can be represented by a single cylinder of finite electronic length. I'll explain what electronic uh, length is. So in this diagram you can see that it is very similar to a RC circuit that is resistance and capacitance circuit and uh, the SOMA can be modeled as a combination of capacitance and resistance and the whole entire processes that is dendrite is represented by a single cylinder of finite length L. We talk about uh, electronic length because this length is expressed in terms of length constant lambda instead of norm centimeter or whatever we have. So we can see that the neuron can be represented as a combination of a soma and uh, a cylinder. So uh, there are a lot of uh, variations in the morphology of neuron and we can see that uh, some neurons are extensively branching. So uh, a natural question arises that whether we can express uh, all the ne uh, neuron in this model or not. So even the extensively branching neuron is expected to uh, fit into the RAS uh, model, provided they fit certain criteria, that these are the criteria <coughs> that uh, specific resistance of the uh, specific membrane resistance and axial resistivity should be uniform along the dendritic tree, and the boundary conditions should be identical. But the most important criteria is this one, that the geometric ratio, that is the ratio of this DI indicates the diameter of the uh, 
uh, daughter branches, and this DP indicates the diameter of parent branch. So if the sum of the uh, daughter branches raise the power 3 by 2 upon uh, this, this, the diameter of uh, parent branch raised the power 3 by 2, this ratio should be equal to 1. It means uh, the sum of daughter and sum of parent branch should be equal. So this is the, one of the most important criteria for fitting to the Ralph's model. So this is how this diagram shows that this is an extensively branching neuron with the uh, extensive branches and we can uh, see that this can be reduced into an equivalent cell in the model. So this diagram shows that uh, this is a neuron which is currently clamped and we record the voltage response from three different sides, that is this side, this side, and this side. And we can see that as the distance varies, that means distance of the uh, recording varies from SOMA, uh, the voltage recorded also varies. So this is what this graph says. This is the voltage response, uh, voltage, and this is the time axis. And these are the three uh, recordings which we uh, get from three different sides. And we can see that the voltage drop as the distance increases. So this was taken from uh, some other <coughs> paper actually just for clarifying the concept. So this idea is basically, this idea from the basic idea of the cable theory, uh, which says that voltage varies with distance and time. So uh, this, uh, entire thing is expressed uh, as a differential equation and the solution of this differential equation can uh, actually be used to analyze Ralph's motor neuron. So it has been shown uh, in the previous papers that uh, if we apply the cable equation under Ralph motor, uh, in the classical Ralph motor neuron, uh, we can easily derive basic formulas to estimate the length, electronic length of the equivalent cylinder, that is L. Uh, and the time constant, this time constant is the time which is taken by a particular neuron uh, to, to reach the 63.2% of the steady state. So, and this is the resistance <coughs> of the processes. And for using this formula, we need parameters such as R, which is the ratio of tau1 and tau2, and A1, uh, which is the which is the amplitude of the Swiss component. I'll explain what it is. Uh, but these things are derived from uh, the current responses which we get. I'll explain it. So this is the response which we get when we current clamp, uh, uh, sorry, when we voltage clamp a neuron at minus 90 millivolt and then give a pulse of minus 100 millivolt for 20 milliseconds and then a pulse of another pulse of minus 80 millivolt for another 20 millisecond. And you can see this is the voltage, the, the, this is the current response. Uh, so this part is a exponential uh, fit, this part fits into the exponential model. And this is the general equation of uh, the exponential model. And we tried a curve fitting in this part, uh, the curve fitting in this part, and we try to uh, get the parameter that is the tau value which we need for calculating the L and R and this is the cosines. So the model which was used in the curve fitting is the sum of exponential. So not all neuron fit into this model. So mathematical criteria for fitting into this model is that R value which is the ratio, between, uh, the ratio of first to slowest time constant and uh, should be less than 9 and A1 should be less than A2, where A1 and A2 is the coefficient, uh, this amp, uh, these are the first two slowest amplitude. So the methods used were, we first prepared brain slices from uh, young rats using the standard protocol, and then we passed them, we recorded the uh, current response under the, uh, that, uh, the pulse I have already shown that, and we then tried curve fitting, and then the analysis were made. So these experiments were repeated in the randomly selected neuron in the two layers, the superficial layer and the deeper layer. So when we tried, started trying curve fitting, we found that there are certain variations in the result uh, depending upon the method of the curve fitting we uh, are using. So I tried three different methods for curve fitting, that is simplex, Levenberg-Markward, and Jebisel. 
And uh, another thing we found that this is the peak of the response, and this is the site where a lot of noise or outliers uh, is present. So it is better to exclude these data set while curve fitting. So this axis shows the time interval which was excluded from the data set for curve fitting, and this axis shows the sum of the square of error. And we can easily uh, make out that the Lewenberg marker is one of the best method as compared to the simplex and chibi cell. So this was repeated for 10 another cells, and we found that Lewenberg marker is best. And uh, it is uh, in terms of how many number of terms we should consider in the uh, model, there was lot, uh, there was uh, lot, lot of variability. That means uh, some neuron fitted into sum of two, some fitted in three or four. So the results we found that the Levenberg marker was best fitting method, and uh, if we exclude first 0.2 to 0.3 millisecond from the peak uh, in the data set, and include almost 90 more than 90 percent of the data points the curve fitting the uh, least sum of squared errors. And we tried this for 10 different cells. <coughs> and uh, we used this protocol for another, uh, further for our uh, results. So we tried like 30 cells, 20 cells in the superficial layer, and 10 cells in the intermediate layer. And uh, we found that the electronic length, uh, the resistance of the processes, and the time constant was not significantly different uh, in these two layers. Though we find uh, the average is a bit, uh, uh, the neuron of the superficial layer appears to be uh, a bit smaller as compared to the uh, SCI. And the time constant in this layer appears to be a bit more. But these differences are not significant. The most important thing which we found was in superficial layer, we find the number of the cases of the failure was uh, very high. That is, 11 of neuron failed out of 20. And in SGI, only 3 failed out of 10. So the number of the failure is very large as compared to the uh, in superficial layer as compared to the intermediate layer. So we conclude that there is high failure rate in the superficial layer neuron. This, uh, this, this indicates that there might be a diverse population in this layer, population of the cell in this layer. And we haven't found any significant difference in length, time constant, and process resistance till now. But still, we need a larger sample size to make any definitive comments.